go ahead and get started. All right, coach, coming off opening weekend, went 1-0-1 against Colgate. Had some ups and downs. Uh, Matthew Wood, two goals. Samu, two goals. Your freshman, nice uh, contributions. Just want to get your thoughts on this past weekend and heading into a non-conference matchup against Holy Cross. Yeah, I think, um, you know, as I might have said last week, that it, it's always hard to replicate how hard an opponent's going to play, especially when you haven't had any exhibition games. And uh, Colgate gave us everything we could handle. I was really impressed with their team. Uh, they're, they're big, they're physical, uh, they skate well. And, um, you know, we got a, a pretty good performance on uh, – we got a great performance from Arsini on, on Saturday. And we're able to, uh, you know, find a way to win that game. And then on uh, Sunday, again, we got another great performance from um, Ethan uh, down 3-1. And I liked our resiliency to come back, find a way to tie that game and uh, preserve a point in that game. But I think we learned a lot. We got certainly a lot to work on. And we're going to have another really tough opponent this week in Holy Cross. They had – you know, a big win over LIU. We actually watched some of that on the bus ride home. Um, they're another team that, that skates very well. Billy Riga has done an excellent job uh, with that program the past couple of years, and we'll have our hands full Friday night. Awesome. All right, we'll, we'll open up for questions. Randy, you want to start us off? Absolutely. Hi, Coach. How you doing today? I'm great, Randy. You? Very good. Thank you. Uh, for those of us who haven't had a chance to see Richard uh, yet, boy, uh, especially that third period, the beautiful pass to Wood and then the snipe. Um, from your perspective, how does his skill set, you, you had him with Wood and I, I think Shandor there in the third period. How do they, How does his skill set complement those two guys who we're you know, pretty familiar with? Yeah, well, I think it complemented it pretty well this weekend. He um He's one of those players that knows what he wants to do with the puck before he gets it. And uh, it's a great skill to have. Uh, not only is he skilled with his hands, you know, uh, and, you know, being able to handle the puck and shoot the puck, but he's really got a high IQ and he knows what he wants to do with that puck. And on both of Matty Woods goals, you know, I think it was on his stick for maybe a half a second before he moved it. And that allowed Matty to get, two pretty good shots off before a goalie could get set. And then on the blue line, just a, you know, an overall general assessment of, um, you know, that, that veteran presence that you guys have, you know, especially uh, their steady play uh, to allow for the comeback on Sunday. What'd you think? Yeah, I think actually it's an area too, that we can improve upon. Uh, thought we were a little reckless with the puck on the blue line and in the offensive zone, we gave them a breakaway with a, you know, a turnover, uh, two turn, basically both of their second and third goal in uh, Sunday's game came off okay. of turnovers by our defensemen, you know, in the offensive zone. And some of it was structure. We weren't in the right place uh, when the turnover took place and others, uh, other, it was uh, puck management you know, making a, a safer play with the puck. So it's an area where I think uh, we can certainly improve upon this weekend. And then finally, for me, you know, I know uh, last week you talked about Samu's kind of confidence and, you know, having the issues getting to campus behind him last year and being able to start, um, you know, really fresh this year. Uh, what'd you see? <laughs> Obviously he produced this weekend. So especially in that first game, it, that kind of, you know, from your perspective, come to fruition, especially on opening night? I thought he was pretty good in all three zones, Randy. He obviously had a couple of goals. Uh, he had the shorthanded goal on uh, Saturday, which was a great play uh, by both he and Tabor Heaslip. Uh, Samu made a great, great play to spring Tabor, and then uh, Tabor gave it back to him, and Samu one-timed it on his forehand, which is not an easy thing to do. Um he, I thought he was really good. He was good in the face-off dot. He played a 200-foot game, and that's what we're going to need from him. All right. Really looking forward to Saturday, seeing you in person up close and live. See you then. You, you and I both. <laughs> Joe, we'll head over to you. Thanks. Good morning, Calf. Good morning, Joe. 
Um, Chase Bradley didn't play on Sunday. Is he banged up? What's his What's his status? Uh, right now he's questionable for Friday. He's not out. Uh, so we'll see how things progress today. But uh, there there is a chance he could play on Friday. Upper body, lower body. Upper body. Upper body. Um, Randy stole my question on Richard. What about Joey Muldowney? What did you uh, like about his performance in the first two games? And and what does he bring to the table as a skill set that will help him contribute? Yeah, he, he you know, he was going to be our 13th forward on Saturday. But, you know, when he got some opportunity, I thought he played really well. And he moved into – and then when Chase got hurt, he took his spot on the power play. Uh, and then uh, – on Sunday, I thought he continued to play really well. Uh, he skates well. He has a good feel for where to be around the net. He's got a knack around the net to get puck, you know, get open and uh, has, a, has a good shot. And he wants to score goals. Like, he's always been a goal scorer his whole life. And uh, I thought he did a, a really nice job for us this past weekend. One last one for me. Um, Thomas Messinio kind of skated under the radar last year, but was just a real – solid defenseman um what has he improved on and, and what improvements would you like to see him see him make well he's a he's a great skater and he's a really good defender he's physical for us uh i'd like to see his uh puck decisions continue to improve sometimes i think uh you know if if uh tom holds on to the puck too long before he makes his decision that he can get into trouble but when he's moving it and joining the play, uh, he's very valuable for us. Thank you. Yep. Daniel, we'll head over to you. You were very complimentary of Tabor at the uh, coaches show on Monday and the way he played over the weekend. So just how has he improved in since the off season, since last year, because he was in the lineup every game last year, but how is he a better player this year? Well, I think he's certainly more comfortable uh, in his role. Uh, Tabor's one of those guys, uh, it's always sunny out with Tabor. Like, he brings so much energy and positive positivity to your locker room, to your practice. He raises the level of practice. Uh, you know, every team needs a guy like him. And then his compete and work ethic is, you know, second to none on this team. So, he, he was good in a lot of different areas. If you ask him to play wing, he did that. He won big face-offs for us because uh, we were struggling a little bit in the face-off dot on Saturday, and he came in and won some key face-offs for us, and it kind of turned the tide. Uh, you know, he's, he, he's, he's kind of our Swiss Army knife. He, he can We can play him in a lot of different roles, and he excels at all of them. Then with face-offs, you had a lot of guys at the dot on the weekend – is it still a process this early in the year of figuring out who your best guys in the circle are going to be, or is it just a matter of game to game? Some guys are hot. Some guys aren't. Yeah. I think, you know, you're going to have guys that are better, better at it than others, but I think it's more the latter, Dan, like some nights you're going against a guy that just has your number and you maybe have to switch it up. Uh, and other nights you might have his number, you know? So, uh, but you want a guy that's consistently, even on a bad night, say he's 45%, you know, you can't be 25%. Uh, so on a bad night, if you're 40, 45%, uh, and maybe you get someone in there to help you out, that's okay. And, and on a good night, you're 65, 70%. So, and then it kind of all evens out. But if you get guys that are 55, anywhere from 55 to 60%, that, that's pretty good on the faceoff dot. We talked about face-offs a lot last year, and they were an issue at times. So since you have pretty much the same group of guys taking face-offs back, how have you worked to improve your percentage on face-offs? Well, I think it's just taking them after practice. It's learning different techniques. And uh, they do uh, – our centers do a, a lot of work in talking to each other and brainstorming different ideas on how to beat guys like – for a righty, sometimes it's harder to beat a righty and it's easier to beat a lefty. So if I'm going from a right shot center and I'm going up against another right shot center, you know, what techniques might work against that guy? Uh, it's doing some film work on them. There's certain guys that have go-to moves. Can you take away their go-to move? Uh, and it's not so much, you know, in the neutral zone as it is 
like in your own defensive zone, you can't be losing faceoffs clean. You're going to give up a pretty good scoring opportunity if you're losing them clean. So that's an area that we really focus on as well. Joe, we'll head over to you. Thanks, Colin. Um, Cav, Owen Simpson uh, played on Sunday. He's a, he's a big boy. Um, what is his, what is his uh, chief attributes or the things he does best that might see him get time? Yeah, I thought he played really well. He gave us solid minutes. He's pretty steady, Joe, uh, defends well. And the one thing that where he has surprised me uh, in this short period of time is he does an excellent job of getting pucks down to the net from the blue line. And that's not, you know, a skill to sneeze at. That's something pretty hard. Like, it's a hard skill uh, to get pucks down, especially today where there's so many layers – of guys trying to block shots, he has a a really good knack of of getting pucks down in the net. So uh, I thought he did an exemplary job in his first game. I guess it all depends on the kid, but do you think it's tougher to blend in as a freshman on the blue line or as a forward? No question on the blue line. I think it's a lot more complicated to be a defenseman coming into a, a team than it is a forward. A lot of times in the forward – you know, you just skate and forecheck and, and be physical. Or you can get by throughout a game. You know, a defenseman gets beat, it's a scoring chance. And that's where you really got to be plugged into the structure of the system and, and make safe plays. You know, if you turn it over as a defenseman, you know, it's like I said, it's probably a scoring chance. A forward turns it over, you still have to get by the defenseman uh, to get a great scoring chance. Thank you. Anything else for coach guys? Yeah, uh, I'll I'll go one general. Just you know, playing at home. You know what 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 does it mean to these guys? And you know, obviously, um, you got the beautiful new home, and you get to play in October there. So I know last week you talked about how guys are hanging around the rink a lot more, and it's kind of building the team up. So what about the chance to play in front of the home crowd? I think it's going to be great. You know, it's always fun playing here at Toscano. Uh, you know, we got to do it five or six times last year, and I'm, I'm looking forward to having a full season here this year. So I know it's going to be pretty busy here on Saturday night. We have a soccer game, a volleyball game, and a, and a hockey game. So there's going to be a lot of energy here uh, on this part of campus, and I'm looking forward to a, a full barn and big student section and a, a rowdy crowd for the Crusaders on Saturday night. Lucas, we'll head over to you. How you doing, Coach? Good morning. Good morning, Lucas. So looking at Holy Cross, like more specifically, obviously been a while since you guys uh, faced off uh, together. What brought you guys back together on the schedule this year? Yeah, last time we faced off against them, our director of ops, Joe Ferris, had a couple goals against uh, – that's how long ago it was since we played them. I think it was 14, 2014. But um, I don't know. It was just uh, – you know, when we moved to Hockey East, uh, they were not a team that we scheduled in a non-league game. But a couple of years ago, uh, I think when Joe, Joe Pereira was still here, he was doing our scheduling. You know, he reached out to Holy Cross or they reached out to us. And it makes sense. You know, they're 50 minutes up the road. They got a great program. And, uh, you know, they're in the league in the women's, women's side. So uh, I think it's a natural non-conference type game we should be playing. Thank you. And uh, more specific towards the game, and obviously you watched some of them on the way back on the bus and probably seen a lot of tape on them. Uh, what are you going to have to do well this weekend as a team to come away with two victories? I think we're going to have to manage the puck. You know, I think, uh, you know, we got in trouble this past weekend when we didn't manage the puck well. You know, we turned it over at the blue line. Uh, it led to grade A scoring chances for Colgate. So, it's certainly an area, and they're a team that I thought Holy Cross, uh, they'll make you pay in transition if you turn the puck over in the neutral zone. So that's an area that we're certainly going to have to be better at this weekend. Thanks so much, Coach. Mm -hmm. Daniel, we'll head over to you. You reminded me mentioning the volleyball game, but have you been over to your old home of Fritas to see how that transition's gone and what it looks like? Yeah, I was actually over there yesterday. Um, 
I was walking a recruit through just to show him like this is where we used to play. But um, yeah, it looks great. I think I know. I know there's a four stages or whatever phases to what they're going to do over there and they finished phase one. I think it looks pretty good and uh, it's, you know, fantastic. I'm, I'm glad that volleyball now has a home and I know what it's like, you know, to, to have a place now that they can call their own and where, um, you know, their team's not as big as, as our team. So if you have 30, I don't know how many players they have 13, 14, 15, 14, 15 players. I don't know, but, there's certainly enough space over there where they can carve out a great lounge and a place to work out and, uh, you know, have a home like we have here. Brandy, will have it be you. Sorry, one more. The question about Holy Cross kind of uh, triggered a, uh, another question. You have the unique perspective of leading, it was 10 years ago, but leading a team out of Atlantic Hockey into Hockey East just feels like maybe 10, 15 years ago, it was, a, it was a big deal when an Atlantic hockey team beat a hockey East team, but they kind of routinely play hockey East teams more. What's your perspective on, you know, today's general, uh, you know, the Atlantic hockey league um, and maybe the, you know, the parody across college hockey now for those, uh, those kind of games. Yeah. It, it, you know, that's a great question, Randy. And I'll tell you the biggest uh, difference between now and 10 years ago was the Atlantic league teams didn't have scholarships 10 years ago, you know, for the most part, uh, they were maybe just getting scholarships or, you know, partially funded 10 years ago. Uh, and now every single one of those teams in the Atlantic league has scholarships and it's made a big difference. You know, you used to routinely see, you know, five or six, hockey East teams in the national tournament. And I think a large part do, because when you played a, the, the record against the Atlantic hockey league with hockey East versus the Atlantic league, 10 to 15 years ago was probably somewhere hovering around 80%. And it's not that anymore. That's for sure. There, there's a lot of good, you saw Bentley last week, take, B, take BU number one team in the country to overtime. Uh, it's not a shock anymore or a surprise. So I know we're certainly not taking Holy Cross lightly. Uh, they're a team that's certainly capable um, of, be of beating hockey teams. They've done it in the past, and uh, that, that conference is getting better and better. The facilities, you know, when I was in that league, uh, the one year that I coached in that league, you know, AIC played out of the Olympia. Uh, Sacred Heart played out of the MIP. Uh, Bentley played out of the Jar in Watertown. You know, that that's not – Bentley has its own rink. Sacred Heart has its own rink. AIC is playing out of the Mass Mutual Center. RIT has a beautiful rink. They've all upgraded their programs. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very good quality Division I hockey conference. 